Yeah, dear Peter, thank you very much for everything. You let us record your trip. Actually, you self-recorded your trip yes. from the United Kingdom to here. Uh, how many months before? Uh, five, maybe six. Five, six see. months before. You come here, you had the varicocele procedure, mm -hmm. and you recorded it. And it's helping people. Uh, because they want the details, mm -hmm. they wonder if it is how is it possible to come here to stay in a hotel, go to hospital, yeah. and after the procedure, will they be able to come back to their countries safely? Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you for this video. It helped us a lot. Now I yeah. want to uh, ask you: Can you summarize how was the trip? How was the difficulty of it? What's your recommendations for people who are uh, planning to come for this surgery? Recommendations? I mean, book a flight as soon as you can and, and just come and get the surgery. The, in, in my eyes, there was nothing really difficult about it. You know, you just How many days is needed to be safe enough? For example, some people are, uh, they are uh, too much anxious mm -hmm. and they want to stay longer. They they say, is it good to I stay there two weeks? I said two weeks is not a really good it's idea. Way too much. Too I much. Uh, I mean, for me, I, I only stayed here five days, and I yeah. think this was including the, the flight days. Or so the first day go with the flight. Yeah. And you will you stay in the hotel that day. Yeah. Next day you come early in the morning for preparations. Yeah. And afternoon we operated. Yeah. So second day we did the procedure. And you, that night you stay at the hospital. Yep. So is it good to separately uh, book the hotel first night first, then second night you will not be at the hotel? Uh, how how did you do it? I booked like a full stretch. Full five days. Yeah, yeah. And I, I picked a cheap hotel that is still quite nearby this current office. Yes. Yes. Um, Janka residence. It's called. Janka. Janka. Yeah. Okay. It just just a cheap one. It has Is some it a hotel or a hotel? Yeah, yeah, hotel has Airbnb, not, not an Airbnb. A hotel, hotel. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember the cost of it? Um, oh, it was a long time ago. Yeah. I don't remember the exact cost, but yeah. it was definitely on the cheaper side. Okay, because there are some people who choose Airbnb. It's very cheap. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes one hundred and fifty pounds. Then. Oh. Uh, the hotels are around 400 pounds, I think, 400 euros maybe. Yeah. Uh, so, yes. And then you had the operation. After, at the operation date, you stayed at the hospital. Yeah. Then, how many nights at the hotel? Three nights? Um, after the operation yeah. date? Three nights, I believe. Yeah. And yeah. was it enough? How was your back trip? My back trip was fine. What I noticed is that it's. For me, the operation was obviously still fresh, you know. Yes. So, and, and you had two sided. It is like yeah. two operations. Basically. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I, when walking, I needed to walk slower, much more controlled, yes. in order to avoid any sudden movements, so that yeah. it would not jiggle and I would not get pain. But apart from this, I think it's definitely tolerable, um, especially considering. And in the UK, how many days you stay at home or rest? How many you recommend? Was uh, the pain was decreasing day by day, yeah. so after a week I could walk fairly normally without having to uh, be very careful yeah. about how I walk. So I would say after a week at the latest you can go back to work. And how many weeks uh, after the operation you said, okay, I am now completely normal? Um, Maybe completely normal. Yes, normal. Uh, you feel the operation effects are finished. It, oh, the acute operational effects maybe month and a half, I would say. Yeah. Month and a half to two months at the most. And, and then after that, I was getting some some um, slight painful, not, not painful, but aching sensations on on left side. But I think this is, as you said, from... Um, prostatic inflammation? Yeah, it was. I will tell it. Yeah, it's a uh, very important subject. Mm -hmm. The pain after the varicocele surgery, the continuing pain after the varicocele surgery, may be related to uh, prostate inflammations, mm -hmm. which is very weird, but they have some relation. Varicocele and prostate inflammations have a relation. Uh, so uh, now, after six months, let's say, yeah. do you feel you are? Uh, 
healed completely. How is your from surgery? Yes. Yeah, fully, fully. Yeah. And what about the pain? Do you still experience pain, or uh, your your main reason for this procedure was pain, right? Yeah. Pain and discomfort. Pain, discomfort. Um, I did a hormonal panel check, and yeah. testosterone values were not where they should be for my age. Yeah. So yeah, these these three reasons. Okay. Um, but the pain, it was. Well, currently now it's nothing, nothing compared to. How many history. months does it take uh, to say that to say it is like this? Every month, well, it, it, it was already massively decreased after after one to two months yeah. after the procedure. Um, compared to before the procedure, two months can pass, and it is it is like nothing. Maybe like five or ten percent of, at the most. Yeah. Um, but six months on, as we are today, five, six months, it's barely noticeable. Okay, so the important subject that some people, although we cure the varicose cell and prove it with ultrasonography, Doppler ultrasonography, there is no remaining pain, mm -hmm. some people still have the testicular pain. Mm -hmm. So I noticed that these guys are having prostate inflammations. How I understand this? Because there are only a couple of reasons causing testicular pain which is one of his testis infections or or, or shitis or chitis and epidemitis i would say this is very easy to understand uh, and the other is varicose the other is prostate inflammations so uh, varicose have finished there is no orchitis the reason must be prostatitis so i treated these people as prostatitis and they are cured so i begin to think why it's happening to these varicose patients and I don't want to take the risk of this, so I did prostate examination to everyone. Mm -hmm. I am now currently doing it to everyone in the varicocele operation to see yeah. if they have prostatitis because I don't want to feel sorry after the procedure yeah. if the pain continues. Mm -hmm. uh, very interesting, I noticed that there are a lot of people in the varicocele group having some prostatic inflammation. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my patients tell me I didn't recognize it before. There is a German paper, research paper, mentioning that the enlarged varicose veins yeah. have some transfer uh, the uh, inflammation, mm -hmm. the capacity of transferring the inflammation to prostate. Mm -hmm. So these guys also have too much prostatic inflammation. Right. Uh, so varicose cell has some kind of connection to prostatitis. Uh, we have many patients that if the pain is not completely resolved after the varicose cell surgery, we treat them with prostatitis treatment and very interestingly, they don't believe at first when I say to them, hey, my friend, you may have this prostate inflammation. They say, what? What's that? Why? I have white cells. Yeah. Pain is still here. It may be recurred. We do the Doppler. I did the Doppler with radiology departments. Mm -hmm. They said, there is no white cells. It's finished. Mm -hmm. But pain is still there. So this is prostate inflammation in some cases. I checked you. You don't, you don't, you feel you don't have it. But still, there was still very little accumulation of the prosthetic fluid. Mm -hmm. So we drained it now. Uh, I hope it will be never needed again. But after one year, if you feel, oh, is there some pain in my testes? Remember, yeah. these prostate inflammations are always try to recur. Mm -hmm. Because we empty the prostate with drugs or prostate massaging. Right. But they fill again. Uh, sometimes they never feel, they never come back, but sometimes they come back. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult for my patients who come from abroad, very long distances. If they have the prostatitis, trouble begins. I, in the operation, I understand this prostatitis. I say to him, hey, my friend, you have huge drainage from the prostate when I did the prostate massage to you after the procedure. Mm -hmm. They say, okay, doctor, thank you. You understand this. So what will we do now? I say maybe three months later you have to come back again for a week and I will repeat the massages. They said, oh, I've come very long distance. What shall I do? Mm -hmm. Varicose cell finish, but this one may come back again. Right. So I am trying now to define a technique mm -hmm. for my patients to do it themselves because no one in the Western medicine is applying this. Mm -hmm. uh, so I try to I made a video defining how to do it to yourself, oh, right. the prostate massage. It's possible in half of the patients. Mm -hmm. 
the other half cannot reach, cannot do it as I do. So I, I use this device. <laughs> Look at this, <laughs> my friend. It's, <laughs> it's not a safe story. <laughs> okay, this is. Give me your hand. Right. Look, this vibration very low. Yeah. But this opens the channels. Oh, so see. if you put it in the near the close to prostate, and mm -hmm. when you open it, you say, oh, that's nothing, no effect, but it makes a vibration. Mm -hmm. And if you wait for 10 minutes, for example, it really drains the prostate. Right. I am actually in the prostate examination, squeezing the prostate, mm -hmm. pressing the prostate. So I am looking for a better device, which will also vibrate, and I can uh, do this yeah. Uh, yeah. squeezing yeah. pressure. This device, you see, it is a little not durable. Yeah. Canada, it's a Canadian uh, brand. Uh -huh. Canadians did it. It's a medical device. Mm -hmm. It's nice. I I always want to use such a device, but when I look to internet, there are these are all like sex toys, <laughs> and you are really uh, I'm embarrassed to see these and yeah. to order these for me. But this is medical device. This is good, mm -hmm. and this vibration, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's nice. So, uh, if in the operation I recognize that this guy, mm -hmm. I do it to everyone. Yeah. Prostate massage in yeah. the varicocele operation. <laughs> and if I notice there is too much discharge, I say to this patient, two options. You can come to me after three, four, five months mm -hmm. to make another check, mm -hmm. or you can do it yourself or with this. Mm -hmm. uh, in all Russian countries, Soviet countries, let's say, you can find many doctors who will do prostate massage. Mm. But Western medicine, they are not they are not accepting this prostate massage as a treatment of prostatitis. Mm. Uh, they have other solutions the, like using six weeks of antibiotics. This may also be tried, mm -hmm. but the, the, so the results are not as good as this prostate massage because there's simply collection of some abnormal fluid inside we have to drain it. Sounded extreme to do six weeks of antibiotics for something that can be manual fixed. Yeah, actually, this is, you know, it was a little painful, it's a little uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So, no, no one wants to have this, of course, mm -hmm. but uh, it was in routine practice before, that's why people always scare from urology examinations. Because previously they, we were all doing like this and people have too much discomfort on this. Yeah. Uh, but now it is uh, not commonly used in the old world. In your case, this, there is not too much inflammation. I don't think it will be a problem for you. And I think your varicocele is over. I am happy to see if there is no recurrence, no veins, nothing. You had some concerns saying that you felt some veins or vascu vasculature or something below the testicle? No, not below, but sitting just above it. So it like this, it's yeah. like we have spermatic cord here, yeah. and just above the testicle, it seems to be a bit more massive than, yeah. than above. This is what I felt, and it's only on the left side. Yeah. Don't know what it is, uh, but we have a structure which is called epididymis. Uh -huh. Epididymis is the uh, place where the sperm channel leaves the testis, uh -huh. and they are collected, and many little channels come together and form one sperm channel. Uh -huh. So it's not like a bare egg. Mm -hmm. There is a structure over the testicle, I like see. you feel it. Yeah. Of course, people will feel epididymis, people will feel spermatic cord. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they say, hey doctor, I felt something, there is something here, yeah. like a cable. Uh -huh. This is spermatic cord. Mm -hmm. And this is vas deferens. There are normal structures. And there will be veins, mm -hmm. because artery is coming to your testis and it will be drained with the veins. You can even notice them, but they will be, they must be smaller than three millimeters. There must be no reflux. Yeah. Uh, and your case, they are small. There is no reflux. Mm -hmm. You are healed and happy. <laughs> Thank you again for sharing this, letting us share this stuff. Yeah, uh, and I wish you the next time a normal, just a sightseeing visit in Istanbul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.